Hey, how's it going? Jason here. And in this episode, we're going to be working on this blue Atlas cedar I have right here. So right here, I have a blue Atlas cedar. This is a new species that I just started carrying on our store, um, but it's definitely one of my favorites. That's why I started growing them. Uh, but what you can tell is that the blue Atlas cedar has these really nice needles. If you take a look really closely, it's got really nice blue needles. Even though it looks really spiky, it is very soft to touch and the branches are very flexible. So as you can tell, look how flexible they are. They're already moving even this thicker one right here this thicker branch right here moves really easily even these thicker ones move really easily so that makes them really easy to train okay now this one has some really nice movement as you can see right in there you can see the movement so the reason the movement is so nice is because i got this about maybe three years ago and i actually wired the trunk so it's basically a straight flexible trunk and i put some wire on it and put some movement in there and that's why you're seeing some of this nice movement that's coming all the way to the apex, which is around here. And then I let the leader grow. That's this guy right here that basically goes all the way up like this. I'll put it this way so you can see it better. And the reason I'm doing that is just to let the trunk thicken up faster and also so that the apex over here will be a little thicker. I mean, it isn't all wispy like this had I cut it. And after that, it's just been sitting in my nursery for the last, you know, two and a half years, uh, just growing these branches. You know, so the branches, maybe there's only one of these, maybe it was this one only. Uh, maybe it was this one right here, but it didn't have all these branches. As you can tell, if I move this cl closer, it's got some really small branches right here, right there, basically all throughout this entire tree. And that's just growth that's developed over the last two and a half years. Now, the same principle can be applied to your bigger trees as well. So if you're able to get a tree that's got even thicker trunk, um, this one is already pretty old. Um, but if you're able to get a tree with a thicker trunk, you can just apply the same technique. Um, you know, go ahead. You might not be able to wire the trunk at that point, but at least you can set it aside to grow these smaller branches here uh, and basically set it up for the styling, which is what we're going to do today. Now, one of the things you have to do, and this is a hard thing for people that are new to bonsai, is that sometimes you've got to just make sure that you're giving the tree nice conditions, that's sun, uh, fertilizer, uh, water, and just let the tree flourish, let the tree grow. Um, and then when it comes time to style it like it is now, you'll see it. You'll see it in the nursery and you're like, well, that's a lot of branches. I got something to work with now. And that's when you bring it into your workshop and start to style it. All right, so I've got this tree in a five inch container that's also in a one gallon with rocks in it. And that basically makes sure that the soil doesn't get too damp and the drainage is really good and that the roots can kind of you know, grow freely past here if we want. All right, so I moved it a little closer to the tree here. Um, so you can see, um, but I've got tons of branches to work with. Okay, if that's the front, now we're the front. You guys already know how to choose the front. Uh, my front's going to be right here. See the most movement. It's got decent bar. It's not actually that great, but it's the best that we're going to get right here. Got movement. I've got um, good taper as well right around here. So that's going to be our front. Okay, that doesn't look like much right now because all these branches are blocking it and I've got tons of parallel branches. And that's a good thing because if you let it, the tree grow, you'll get all these branches that kind of conflict with each other. And that's great. Um, I am really lucky though. I've got branch here. That's really nice. I've got a perfect branch over right here, right past this curve right there, right into this bend. I've got a really nice one right there. And I've got this thicker one that's right here that is kind of right before um, right before this uh, pocket right there. So that's gonna be really nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break out the wire and I'm gonna wire this tree really quick, just using the same principles that I've showed you guys before. And then we're gonna see what this thing looks like. All right, so I got the first and second branch done. Um, that was pretty quick. Uh, so now we're just gonna work up the tree and sort of, sort of just go alternating branches. I've got the first, second, I've got an alternating one here, I've got another one come on this side. Got those four, I've got those four wires, so it's starting to look a little bit better. I've got two back branches to choose from. This one or this one. So I'm gonna choose the lower one. Okay, so I've got my first conflict right here. I've got two parallel branches, this one and this one, this one, this one. I actually wired this one already. So I've got this one above it. I didn't wire that one because I was wondering whether or not I was going to keep it. And I've, you know, tried to place it over here, tried to place it over here, but basically those two at the same spot are causing a conflict. And also that one's in the pocket, so I'm going to let that one go. That one's gone. And what that does is it opens up the tree a little bit. So right around there, it shows the movement off a little bit better. 
Now I've got my first thicker branch that I gotta bend down is this one right here near the top. Now one I don't like the thicker branch at the top, but I think it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna bend, bend that down for now. Maybe something else will be better that I'll replace it later, but for now I gotta bend it down. It's really flexible, but what you don't wanna do is accidentally tear the branch off of the trunk. So you still got protected as you bend it down. That one came down. You can see that one's down now. Um, actually, bent that down a little bit too much, so now I can bring that up a little bit. There we go. Nice. Okay, then I'll do those secondaries on the side. Once again, I got parallels in the back, so I'll eliminate one of them. All right, so I've gotten all the bottom branches here wired. Um, now it's time to work on the apex. So let's do this section right here. That's gonna be the crown. And then uh, we're going to decide where we're gonna cut this, this leader off, this one right here, and then we'll finish it up. Okay, so I've got all the branches wired up that I want. Now it still looks kind of messy, as you can tell, and especially this part right here. So now we're gonna eliminate the top. Um, I basically wore it to the point where I thought I needed the branches, so I'm gonna cut off the rest that I think I don't need. That makes the tree uh, much more proportioned now. Okay, now I get rid of some more, and then I wanna make sure I leave a little bit just for some dieback, just in case. And then I don't think I need this one right here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna arrange it first, uh, just in case the apex here just in case I accidentally break that somehow. And like I said earlier, these branches are so flexible. They make it so easy. Okay, so I'm glad I kept it because actually now I realize I don't need the whole thing. I can just save a little bit of it. Just because there's some growth on the end right there. That looks pretty good. You can see how I arranged this. So the apex go like this. This guy's gonna create the crown right there, just like that. A little loose branch right there that's dead and we'll cut that off. So now I've got a nice crown at the top. But now you can see that all the branches are just too long. And that's because I haven't really done any trimming. So now we'll go in there with my, and do the favorite part, which is the shears. So I'll go ahead and get rid of all the growth that I don't like. And then I've got these all wired to the ends. So make sure I use a wire cutter so I don't accidentally mess up my shears. And I can start to cut back on the branches that are way too long. I was starting to bring it in and you guys are probably noticing I'm making incremental cuts So if I think that I've got too much, I don't I'm not too worried I can just let it grow and then if I want to go and make another cut I could just make that adjustment Let's see that's starting to come into scale, right? That's starting to look pretty nice um, I think we still do some more work here. So let's keep on doing this the slow incremental trimming If you guys take a look, where do you guys think it's heavy? Um, I think it's a little heavy right there. So let's make an adjustment there So don't forget to make your adjustments on the back as well. Yeah, see, I didn't even touch these. Look at these, this, these are way too far out. Like this one. You can't tell if you do like this, you can see if there's a triangle right there and you can make those cuts based on it. That one, that one's too far out. That's an easy decision there. Even this one's a little too far out, but it's not too bad. Okay, and I'm using the wire cutter because I have wire on it. Let's trim back a little bit. Another thing you can do is you don't always have to cut it. You can swing them in. Swing them out, give it a little bit of movement, just kind of compress it a little bit. That's an easy way to do it as well. I've got another parallel branch right here that was hiding. I think I was deciding whether or not to keep it, and I've decided I don't want it. So that's gone. That makes it a little cleaner. And I really like the cedars to sweep down. All right, so I think it looks pretty good. I'll turn around so you guys can see it. 
go. Let me scoot up and then we'll quickly go over the tree again to a quick summary. Basically what I did was I wired all the lower branches, first branch, second branch, and then I just alternated the branch, left, right, left, right, left, right, all the way to the top. And then I found where the crown was. Um, I kind of positioned them with my hand to see if, okay, which branches would I need to create the crown? And once I found them, I wired them, put them into the place and cut off the leader that I didn't need, which is right there, as you can see the cut. And that'll heal over and also disappear underneath all that foliage. And then what I did was I brought all the branches down, put them in, swung them all down. I really like the Blue Atlas Cedars. I think when you swing the branches down like this and you match them to each other, it flows really nice and it gives us really nice movements, this nice smooth movement. Uh, so I brought those all down and I used my shears and just cut it back to where I believe um, the full, you know, where some of the branches were too long. And then I didn't do a perfect triangle. Notice I didn't do a perfect triangle all the way down. It kind of overlaps at certain points. And I think that's nice because it kind of gives it that more natural feel to it as opposed to just a perfect triangle. Um, so you kind of have, I can, you can kind of break up the triangles into sections as opposed to one large one. Uh, so it kind of dips back in. So it's here, it's a little short and then it comes out and then it dips back in. Uh, like here, right here, it kind of dips back in and comes out again. So it breaks it up a little bit, makes it look a little bit more natural. Okay, and then lastly, in terms of care, the Blue Atlas Cedars, they really like full sun and they, you know, they can handle the heat, they can handle a little bit of dryness, but try to water that daily when it starts to get hot. Um, but they, they basically handle a good amount of climates. Um, I really like them. Uh, I fertilize it during, you know, from spring to the fall, scale it back in the winter. Uh, just the basic things that you kind of do with all the rest of the bonsai. But let's, let me bring a pot over and we can see hmm, maybe what we can put this in. I'll probably pot this in the next few weeks. Um, I want to see what this looks like in a pot. I'm done with it and I kind of just want to have it done, uh, completed in a, in a pot. All right, so I bought, I brought a few pots over here just to give you an illustration of the difference a pot makes. So if I go over here, see how the, the oval pot makes the whole tree look soft overall. Um, I think maybe this is still a little bit heavy on the tree, but it's actually not bad. It actually looks pretty good. Um, and then if I go smaller, so let's do an oval again, but let's go with a smaller one. Now this one, I'd have to trim a lot of roots and I'm probably gonna have to trim too much uh, for this, this tree to, I mean, I can fit it in there, but it looks like the little pot's a little too small. Okay. And then I've got this guy. Now I've got a rectangular pot with really harsh edges. So this one gives it a very strong base, um, sort of that uh, sort of, thicker boulder look, um, but you can kind of see what kind of effects the shape of the pot has. So this one, so we got an oval. This one's an eight inch oval. Then we have a little six inch oval right there, there. And then we've got the eight inch rectangle. All right, so let me know in the comments which pot you think fits this the best. Um, also let me know if you have any questions and uh, if this was helpful, give me a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching.